All right. Welcome to our neighborhood here in Istanbul, which is on the European side and it is called Besiktas and we highly recommend this neighborhood. So come along with us as we go check out the supermarket here. We will do a full grocery store tour. And first things first, I love the name of the supermarket because it's called Mmm Migros. Sounds like there's delicious things inside and actually a few delicious things even outside with some uh veggies for sale now ivana has been commenting that she thinks the onions look a little ugly in turkey <laughs> looks like they've been in a fist fight or something but we Not bought them turkey. before and we confirmed maybe they taste good <laughs> maybe just in this shop maybe just in this shop uh potatoes 13.50 lira per kilo and onions about 10 lira per kilo for this video we'll use the exchange rate of about one American dollar makes 20 lira. So 50 cents a kilo and uh, 75 cents a kilo, roughly. And by the way, what is this thing? One of the realities in Istanbul is the signs are not in English at all. We see this fruit everywhere. It's almost like a mini apple, isn't it? Yeah. It's almost like a bunch of tiny apples and not cheap. It's like uh, two bucks or 2.25 a kilo something new i think it's a tiny apple my guess is it sour inside i don't know i'm not sure something new idea. something new <laughs> anyway let's uh let's go inside okay first things first is the magazine and evidently book section so a bit of a superstore inside maybe not only food items and of course some self-checkout at the front although there are some proper cashiers at the back there and as per usual in the grocery store, the very beautiful fruit and veggie section is the first thing you see with some super massive cabbages. <laughs> Holy jumping. <laughs> Look at the size of the cabbage. No joke, bigger than your hand, bigger than your head. <laughs> this is garlic you want. It doesn't look like garlic. It looks like onion it almost. Bite. Are you sure? No, maybe it's onion. No, no, I don't know. Garlic? Good question. <laughs> And I tell you what, I'm having a hard time figuring out the prices because none of these words, I know what they mean. I guess some of them can sort of stand out, like maybe broccoli. Okay, broccoli, 54 lira a kilo. But it's not clear exactly what the prices are. Maybe we'll just put it in the bag and see at the cash register. It'll be an adventure. <laughs> these words mean I guess carpos mini carpos kilogram so carpos means watermelon this is a carpos kilogram now from the fruit and veg we go to the bakery and our fresh bread and treats section let's try to find the cheapest bread like the equivalent of wonder bread maybe bread. uno toast looks pretty basic yeah uno this kind of thing looks like the uh, equivalent of the wonder bread you're looking at about a dollar for a loaf of bread which is not bad actually and even the fancy breads with all your chia seeds and oats and whole wheat only a dollar fifty not bad and from bread to meat my assumption would be all of this meat is halal they've got a full deli with a bunch of meat you can order to be sliced. Some guys working back here with the thin slicing machines. My assumption is there's no pork and it's all halal, which is sort of not intuitive because just around the corner, just past the meat section is the beer and alcohol section, which is on public display. And it's very common to drink uh, alcohol in Istanbul, but I believe there's no pork and there's uh, all halal meat for sale. Not gonna pretend to know what this is. It's like two bucks or two fifty. It almost looks like a cross section of a something. I don't know. Let me know if you guys know. Some sort of meat product, thinly sliced. Almost like a brain or something. Not sure. Or like a hoof. What is that? Let me know if you guys know. Now this thing is in every grocery store, and it seems like every convenience store, corner store. You name it, they're selling this. It's 
called manti i believe you can almost think of it like a ravioli it's like a noodle on the outside and it's stuffed with different things i think meat inside although they don't serve it with tomato sauce it seems to be served with a yogurt sauce or a white sauce but i love the way it's made it almost looks handmade you can see each individual noodle almost has like finger markings of somebody who like squeezed the four corners of it uh looks like homemade and delicious stuff and very common in uh in turkey in our experience and so one of the funnier things of the trip to the grocery store in our experience is like i said no english so what is this for example we bought this and we had no idea what it was we're thinking it could be spicy it could be like pepper sauce could be tomato sauce it's uh i guess no it's beaver sauce <laughs> it turned out to be kind of spicy and maybe like an like an eggplant and pepper spicy sauce yes. almost like an it's ivar like chili. Yeah. but quite spicy yes anyway it was uh, pretty flavorful but we didn't know what it was we thought we would try it and this is another thing uh when we first saw this we were like what on earth is this we actually had it served to us at a restaurant. I guess it starts off in a big blob like that and they shape it with their hands. Uh, they call it... Chik kofte. Chik kofte, which means meat-free kofta or kofte. Yeah. I think it's from... Bulgur. Bulgur, which is a type of wheat. But uh, this is a pretty common experience for us in the grocery store. We look at stuff and go, what could this be? Hmm, something new. Let's try it. <laughs> Pickle juice too. They just sell pickle juice. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, pickle juice. Two bucks for what is that? A liter of pickle juice. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you drink it, or do you put it in like a soup? Maybe you put it for soup. I have no idea. That's funny. Pickle juice by the liter. Okay, something new. <laughs> and so we've also learned that the word for milk, in our estimation, is soot, like this. Because accidentally, last week we bought a liter and a half of some sort of drinkable yogurt and so we were quite surprised in the morning when we poured our coffee and wanted to add milk and we almost poured drinkable yogurt in the coffee yeah. <laughs> but it's about a dollar for a liter of milk and about two dollars for a dozen eggs and those are the cheaper eggs and the cheaper milk yeah. not bad, not bad. Ooh, they also got kaimak which as we know some of the greatest food in the whole world looking at about a dollar or two Kaimak, oh my gosh. Chocolate Kaimak? Can it be? Coco Kaimak? For a dollar fifty? Guaranteed buying this. Oh my gosh, chocolate Kaimak. Now in terms of the price of cheese, I can't really help you guys too much because I don't know what kind of cheese this stuff is. Let's guess this is, I don't know, mozzarella. 600 grams. 150 so seven or eight dollars pretty good price but good luck figuring out which one's parmesan and which one's mozzarella which one's cheddar anyway usually about five six seven bucks pretty good price for cheese whoa is this butter yes thousand grams that's a kilo of butter right there yeah teriyaki <laughs> of butter for eight bucks now like i said huge beer section it's in public and it's on display despite the fact that it is a muslim population country huge wine section uh big range in prices here maybe we'll find the cheapest and the most expensive bottle at the grocery store but it's not clear to me that um on the asian side of istanbul there will be alcohol like this and as you move more and more east in turkey you're into like bordering syria Middle East, it might not be on display. Yes. This might be more European side of. Maybe. Maybe. Not sure. <laughs> but in the end, uh, I've been doing my best to keep the local beer uh, profitable. And I've been buying my FS one liter bottles. It's about two bucks for these big bottles, 37 lira for a, uh, what is that, 600 mils? 500 mils of the local beer, which is FS. And actually there's an FS Pilsner and a dark one and a few different variations, but FS Pilsner for me. Oh my gosh, I really can't believe there's Budweiser. It seems like every year Budweiser is becoming more and more international, which, listen guys, take it from a North American, one of the worst beers in the whole world. And it's actually more expensive than local beer. 
I don't know if Turkish people are paying a premium for bad North American beer over their own homegrown quite good beer. But that's surprising to me that there's uh, Budweiser for sale in Turkey. Although, you know what? Maybe even in Eastern Turkey, maybe they still have alcohol for sale in the public because they are making their own alcohol. I believe this is Turkish Raki, which has taken its shape in many countries we've been to. Albania, Rakia, yes. Serbian Rakia. Uh, in Romania, they have Palinka. All mm -hmm. comes from this sort of homemade, I think it's from fruit, would be my assumption. And it's a very Turkish thing. So maybe all across Turkey, they're selling alcohol and drinking alcohol in public, but about 500 lira, which would be like 25 bucks for a nice bottle of local Turkish Rakia. Which again is cheaper than the imported stuff. So you can get local Turkish Rakia, 25 bucks, or you can get Jack Daniels for 30. I feel like most people are drinking local, but I don't know if that's I true. So. I don't know if that's true. So the Pepsi and Coke prices are pretty f manageable. It's funny that Coca-Cola is always more expensive than Pepsi, but it is better, isn't it? Coca-Cola or oh, Pepsi? Yes. I would pay the premium for Coca-Cola. Now, in terms of Lay's chip flavors, uh, this word I'm sure means classic. Okay, that's familiar. About a dollar fifty for a big bag. Uh, let's let's guess spicy. what this one is. Baharatli. Chili could, peppers. Could be a, um, could be like a paprika flavor. Yeah. Spicy paprika. Peppercorn. Looks good. A typical red bag. Of course, the green bag of yogurt. Lay's usually is like a sour cream onion or a yogurt and, yogurt and raita. This one is going to be yogurt and something. Something green. Something green. <laughs> Pretty common flavor. They they vary it by country, but it's sort of familiar. Yeah. And I guess there's only three flavors. Not too many uh, flavor selection. Fair. I guess Turkish people don't eat too many chips. <laughs> maybe, so. No <laughs> maybe so. Maybe <laughs> so. Oh, they eat more nuts, I think. Oh, more nuts. Chips, okay, maybe. okay. Yeah, salty nuts, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, even Doritos, only two flavors. You got the you got the taco flavor, and you got the nacho. <laughs> <laughs> nacho and taco, same same, no? <laughs> uh, no, not bad. About a buck for a bag. <laughs> taco and nacho, and that's it. Oh, a tiny bit more down here. Uh, you got a hot, a couple bags, and uh, and a risk. This is the burn your mouth flavor. An extreme Mexicano. Extreme Mexicano. These are the small bags. But it feels like Turkish people have a healthy diet. Not a lot of processed chips. In Canada, the chip aisle is as big as this whole aisle. All, all chips. And it's usually picked through and everyone's going there first stop. <laughs> and over here, they've got a frozen bag of cement as well as a frozen box of pide, which is pretty iconic uh, Turkish food. It's sort of funny they sell it frozen because in the street, it's available everywhere yes, and it's right. fresh. And delicious but i guess that makes sense they, they want it at home too uh the simit is about 50 lira for that huge bag of those sort of like a pretzel but um, a turkish pretzel let's say and i'm not gonna lie guys the price of the pide i can't find it i don't know which sticker goes with it i think i found it oh maybe it's here pide, pide 75 lira good job ivana <laughs> good work and in our accommodation you cannot drink the tap water so we've been buy in this size water bottle. What is that? Five liters, I think. Yeah, five liters for 50 cents. Sort of funny because in Canada, if you're buying water in this size, you're going camping. But in Istanbul, at least in our accommodation, you can't drink the water. So we've got an apartment full of water bottles. I actually wonder how many Turkish people have a filter. So the water comes out of the wall, goes through a filter and you can drink it. It's very convenient because we're buying tons of water bottles because honestly, my stomach is so weak that uh, when we boil water with rice in it, like boil rice, we use clean water. <laughs> My stomach is so weak that I'm always trying to play it safe. But uh, I wonder how many Turkish people have the water filter. I noticed this type of cookies. They're pretty popular here. It's like cookies with little chocolate sprinkles. Oh, it's almost like a like a little mini pie or a little mini tart. Oh, I see what it's like. What yeah, this? yeah. Chin yes. or sin. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like a chocolate sprinkle pie. Yeah. Or tart, you know? It's nice. Want to try it? Buy it. <laughs> Not gonna lie. A little bit disappointed with the size of the mustard section. I mean, we got ketchup and mayonnaise for days. And we got six bottles of mustard tagged along there. <laughs> And 
I guess there's actually a small clothing section back here. Isn't there? In terms of the layout of the store, I mean, it's a massive store and it's like 90% food items, sort of standard grocery store. But there is this small 5 or 10% uh, clothing items as well as some luggage randomly, which is going for a very cheap price. Probably not going to last for long-term travelers like Yvonne and I, but a uh, pretty good price. And like I said, just the kind of back corner of the store is non-food items, housewares plates. and plates and stuff, but mostly grocery store. Oh, my uh, Ivana has made it to heaven. I actually tried it before, and this is made in Turkey, not made in Indonesia, and it tastes different. It's not the same. It's not the same. Oh, it's not authentic. <laughs> it's not approved. It must be made in Indonesia to be good, but <laughs> close enough. How's the price? I guess pretty familiar, 50 cents. This is like the instant noodles of Indonesia. Yes. But you're saying it's not right, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'd, uh, we'd love to tell you the different kinds of rice, but like I said, unless it's a North American brand like Heinz or Coca-Cola, it's not translated at all, which is fair. I know so jasmine. in the end, we've, we've been buying jasmine rice because we know what it is. Yeah. But there's this kind of rice, which is almost like a Japanese one, a real short one. This is uh, like half cut rice or something. That looks like it's been cut in half, yeah. Not sure why. Uh, not exactly sure why. Another kind of rice here, but you just I think I think parins means rice. Yeah, parins means rice. rice. But in the end, it's like two bucks for a kilo of rice, mm. with some variants up and down of different brands. But overall, pretty common price is, is about what is. two bucks a kilo. This is less than a dollar for a kilo, and this is a funny kind of wheat. Actually, they said where you can make lots of different stuff out of it. Uh, it's called bulgur. Yes. Uh, actually, this is what's used to make that funny meat-free kofta. kofta. Comes from bulgur. Interesting, interesting. Mm -hmm. Shout out. Besiktas mug. Not bad. What's the price on that bad boy? Yeah, I'm guessing they're the same. It's gotta be the same. It's uh, it's a $5 mug. Not bad. Oh gosh, we got a fish out of water over here. This bald Canadian trying to figure out which one is shampoo. <laughs> I got no hair and I got no ability to read it. It's gotta be Samp one. Sounds like shampoo, shampoo. Yeah, 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 that's this right. This one is three and one. So that's $2.50 for shampoo Pantene. Okay, that's right. Now, Turkish coffee is obviously world famous, but I believe it's famous because of the style of cooking it, right? Turkish coffee is a style. It's like where you leave the coffee grinds in the cup. Right, right. I don't think they're growing beans in Turkey. No. I don't think they have their own coffee bean, but they definitely have their own style. With that being said, the tea and coffee section is seriously massive. It's a whole wall, uh, half coffee and half tea. We've got some familiar brands like Lipton, but especially for tea and uh, coffee as well. But especially tea, there are lots of local brands. Oh, but hold on a second. This might be Turkish coffee. I think cafe tea means breakfast. Breakfast. It's definitely grinded up and it looks like it's a Turkish brand. I'm gonna buy this and see if it's good. I believe this is coffee that's uh, Turkish. Usually we go with Jacobs. This is a common one. <laughs> but this is a Turkish brand. You're looking at about, uh, what is that? $1.25 for 100 grams of mm. grinded coffee. We'll try it out. I mean, it can't be bad. It's coffee after all. Yeah. Coffee is like pizza. When it's bad, it's still kind of good. <laughs> wow, I really can't believe the size, or should I say the lack of size, of the peanut butter section. In Canada, we're selling peanut butter by the kilo, baby. Uh, over here, they've got Nutella. Okay, pretty big Nutella section. They've got the Biscoff spread, which is a new item for me, but it seems to be catching on in the world. And then a few jars of peanut butter. I think this is peanut butter, crunchy, uh, two fifty. Uh, Maybe Nut Master, but this looks more like macadamia hazelnut. and hazelnut. Wow, they really don't eat a lot of peanut butter. I mean, in Canada, this whole section from here to here would be peanut butter, like four or five different brands and huge, <laughs> huge amounts of peanut butter. Uh, you've got two or three types of peanut butter here. 
and it doesn't look like it's a mass produced thing. It's almost like a niche kind of like a small market product. Yeah. Oh, something new. And I guess what they lack in peanut butter, they make up for in honey, as well as hazelnut spread. Tons of different kinds of honey. This honey, ready, Vanna? Yeah, honey. Everywhere you look, different and really nice looking labels with what appears to be different flavors or different uh, flowers. flowers. And you're looking at about 50 to 150 lira for 400 grams of honey. Not bad. And I tell you what, I think the reason that Turkish food is so good and so famous, or at least one of the reasons, is because the geography of Turkey is so amazing. It sort of connects the Middle East into the Balkans. It's like Asia into Europe. So Asia, Ivana and I have fallen in love with the meat, especially in the Muslim world, they have really good meat. But in Europe, especially in the Balkans, they have the cheese. So we've come to the cheese section, which is something I've been missing. Ivana and I just spent a month in Pakistan, not a lot of good cheese. So it's nice to be back in a cheese country, as it were. And uh, anything and everything under the sun from prepared and sort of sliced up into prepackaged, but still very fresh looking cheese. And olives, oh my gosh, I love olives. Smells so good in this section. Anywhere from, I guess, 73 to 160 at the high end, like, like four to eight dollars per kilo for fresh and good looking olives. Oh, it's good to be back. And of course, this is like a set of baklava, no? It almost looks like sushi the way it's rolled up. This is not baklava. No, not baklava. It's like pastry. This is like... Uh, it's like marshmallow inside. Ah, uh, they're calling it Turkish Delight. Yes. Seven, eight bucks for a, 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 almost like a gift. It looks so beautiful. You could like present it for a birthday. Yeah. And what would a grocery store be without a television? Not bad price. Is that right? 150 bucks for a 32 inch television? Wow, maybe no name brand. Not bad though. All right, so we got chicken and we got eggs and we got veggies and coffee and tea and beer and shampoo and olives and cheese and we were in for 450 eight lira something like 22 dollars usually we check the receipt to make sure it's right but we don't understand one word <laughs> so we're gonna trust them in this instance i believe the plastic bags are free but we brought our own and in our experience every single cashier speaks english very well Yes. And are very friendly. They start speaking Turkish to us. I guess we look Turkish because they always start speaking <laughs> I don't Turkish. Think so. I and don't. then we say, "Sorry, speak English." And they go, "Yeah, no problem." So uh, there you have it. Full shopping tour, and we'll see you guys in the next video. The sun is coming out here in Besiktas. Oh, yeah. All right, later, guys.